Hi guys and welcome back to another Photoshop tutorial. My name is Fran. I want to thank you for joining me today. I know it's a pretty crazy time out there. Um, pretty uncertain so I do hope you're all keeping well and safe. So I'm sure many of you are still on lockdown and trying to keep yourself busy. So I thought it'd be a great time to show you a little tutorial on how to get some really cool moody food shots. So this image started out a little bit differently. It's quite bright in tone. Um, it's got a lot of hot spots. Um, it's on a really nice background and it's got some really dark elements which really help. And we're gonna turn it into this. So it's quite moody. It's got some nice blue and purple tones in there. So let's get started and I'll show you how to do this. So first thing we want to do is Control J which will duplicate the background layer. I'm going to go to filter and convert for smart filters. So smart filters are something that we can go back to later. So if in a week's time I'm not happy with the adjustments I've made, I can double click this and it will bring me back the dialog box and we can fine tune it even more. So that's what a smart object is there. So we're going to go to filter, camera raw filter, and I'm going to darken this quite a little. And I'm going to darken this quite a bit so the exposure is going to be brought down. I'm going to bring the contrast up just to increase that darkness. Highlights can come down a little bit because it was quite hot in this area here. Open up the shadows just a little bit there. Maybe bring the whites up. Blacks down. Nice bit of clarity. I love clarity. So we'll go for something like that. And then I'm going to move along to the sharpness tab here, the detail tab. Um, and I'm going to add some sharpen here. So what you want to do is hold Alt on the mask slider, which will if you slide it to the right, we'll bring in more detail. So anything that's white will be sharpened. Anything that's black will not be. So if you really want, just want to fine tune um, some of the areas to sharpen, then you can do. But I'm probably going to go for something like that, just to bring some sharpening in the background as well, on that background surface. So something like that. So just up the sharpen there. So that's looking quite nice zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing and I might even um, add some vignette as well so probably something like that all right so that's done click OK and that's looking quite dark and moody so I was talking about the smart filter before you can see it here um, if I was to save and close this and like I said, come back in a week's time or whenever I feel ready to come back to it. I can literally click on this camera raw filter here and it'll bring back the dialog box so I can change anything I want on this image. Um, you know, if I wanted to revert back, I can go to default or if I want to just start again um, and mess around with all sorts of sliders here, I can do, which is really cool. So you always want to work non-destructively. So using a smart filter will help you with that. So I'm quite happy with that, but actually I might just go back in and brighten up some of the areas just to add a little more detail and interest. So I'm going to double click on that camera raw filter again. I'm going to go up here to the top panel here and I'm going to go to adjustment brush and I'm going to add a little bit more light to some of the areas. So here, I'm just going to paint there. Okay. And I'm just going to bring this exposure up. Just bring the highlights. Shadows might go up a little bit as well here, maybe some white. And then I'm just going to paint in some more of the areas here that I want to be a little bit bright or brighter should I say just to add a little bit more interest to the image so this adjustment brush 
is using the same settings just to paint in more of the detail here. Now even though it's a moody shot I do want some more interest and some hot spots just to draw the eye in. Um, I might even add some to the crease in here. So that's looking quite nice. So yeah, really happy with that. So I'm going to click OK. So I've just noticed when I opened up the camera raw filter, you can't actually see the OK and cancel buttons. They're actually further below my um, screen here. So you can't quite see them, but they are there. And you can always press enter as well on your keyboard just to accept those. So just to bear that in mind when I'm recording this. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. I'm actually gonna brighten some of the sections a little bit more here. So I'm gonna go down here, which is the adjustments panel. I'm gonna go to curves, and I'm gonna bring a bit of a curve up here. And I'm gonna invert that mask as well. So I'm gonna change it to black, and then paint in using a white brush. So to do that, there's a couple of ways you can press Alt and Backspace, sorry, make sure you've got your foreground on black. Alt, Backspace, which will create a black mask. Or you can come to the Properties panel, which will look like this, and click on this. Oops. So you click in this window here and go Invert, and that will invert the mask. And I'm going to get a white brush here. And then I might even just do it to maybe 20% and then build up some of the light on here. And literally just paint, make sure you're in the, the mask there. Paint some more light into some of these elements just to give it a little bit more life. A bit of dynamic range here. I might change that to 50%. Enter there. So you can see what I'm doing here. Might even go to a hundred. even give that edge a little bit more light and maybe that section there and then maybe some to the crease in as well just to bring that out and then what you can do is you can adjust that layer a little bit if you want to but I'm liking that so I'm going to change the colour of the egg yolk here because it's just looking a little bit too green and I want it to be more on the orange yellow side. So I'm going to go down here again, choose hue saturation, change the master to yellow and then I can literally change the colour here which is really cool. I'm going to go more towards an orange tone. All right and again I'm going to Invert that mask, so make sure your foreground's black. Alt, backspace, change my foreground to white, get my brush, and then just paint in that yellow. So it was just looking a little bit too green for my liking. And then if you do need to tailor that, you can. 
So I'm going to go for something like that. It's looking really nice. I want to add a little bit of gradient as well. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose gradient map, which it will have a random setting on um, when you first open it. And then you want to pick your colors for your gradient. And I want like blue, purple tones. So I'm going to double click there and I'm going to choose a dark purple, something like that. It's quite nice. And then the highlights are going to be, yeah, maybe like a yellow. Click OK. Now obviously that looks <laughs> quite bad. So I'm going to choose soft light and then I'm going to change the opacity, maybe 50%, 25% maybe. It's looking quite nice. And then I'm going to go to selective color and just have a play around with the neutral tones and make them a little bit more purple so or blue so the opposite of yellow is blue so i'm going to introduce some blue to the to the colors there magenta add a little bit of magenta there maybe a little bit of cyan and i'll change the opacity to 25 percent so i'm just adding some purple tones in there just to complement some of the purple um, food that we've got in there as well and i think that is pretty much it. I may add some more sharpening to the center of the image. So I'm going to go to this drop down menu here and you're going to click Alt on your keyboard and then Merge Visible, which is going to create a layered stack of everything below it. So a merged stack, uh, merged layer, sorry, of everything below it. And I'm going to go to Filter, Other and High Pass. And I'm going to create a high pass layer for my sharpening. So I'm going to go and change the blend mode to soft light, create a mask, and then just paint in all this area here. And then again, you can probably change the opacity a little bit, maybe 50% on that one. And add all these layers back, all my adjustment layers, and that's looking really, really nice. So I'm really, really liking that. Might be a little bit too vibrant, a little bit too strong, a little bit too moody, um, but you know you can tweak that to your liking and bring it to the the standard that you're after. And that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for joining me. It's been quite some time since I've made a tutorial, so I'm a little bit rusty, but hopefully you've learned a trick or two for really bumping those images and just making your food photography look a little bit more interesting. You can follow me on Instagram if you would like to see some of my latest work at Photoshop Fran. And I'll hope to see you soon in another tutorial. Take care, stay safe, see you soon.